geez guys, it is crazy windy out here. It is blowing me all over the road. It's also blowing these giant trucks all over the road. One of them almost smashed into us just a bit ago. Yeah, that was, that was mildly terrifying. That was pretty scary, you guys. But I mean, you gotta think we're basically a shed with wheels on it, so the wind really doesn't like us very much. But we're getting there slowly but surely. Good morning, adventures. Man, we are living the life here. We've got our Christmas candle going over here. We've got Christmas tunes going on. Got some eggs cooking right here. Our idea today is to make some gourmet bagels. <laughs> like a breakfast bagel sandwich, basically. Check these yeah. out. <laughs> They're like grown up pizza bites. This was all leftover meat and cheese that we had from a little tray that we got just as a snack. And Allison came up with this amazing idea to make the cutest little bagel sandwich. So amazing. I'm so <laughs> smart. It reminds me of the time when we actually made pizza bagels from scratch. Remember that? That's right. The Bon Appetit video. Yeah. That was like right in the middle of the when the lockdown started. Yeah. I'm that? so. I guess this is a different type of lockdown, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two eggs for you. <laughs> Two for me. Come on. Awesome. Breakfast is served. And then you take this, you put it on top. Come on, that works. That's it's awesome. Beautiful. Well, good morning, adventurers. I said good morning, adventures already. You did? <laughs> we'll when did you say it? Earlier this morning. Well, anyways, like we mentioned, we made our way down to a KOA last night. Got up this morning, spent way too much time getting ready. We have to get a lot better at this. We don't have spots for everything, so cleanup is quite a process for us. Yeah. And everything has to kind of be wedged into corners <laughs> and stuff, otherwise it all falls out of our cabinets. It's also hard to just get up and going because we want to cook breakfast, make some coffee, chill, take long showers, yeah. because we can. <laughs> yeah, we were just jamming out to Christmas music, chatting, but now it's 1030, but that's okay. So we are actually just southwest of St. Louis. It's gotten very cold though, and you guys are always telling us we should try to take this thing international. So we decided we're gonna hit the road and go to Cuba. But seriously, we're going to Cuba right now. Let's go. Okay, adios. Well, we were off until we realized we forgot one important thing. I turned around and the fridge was out to here. <laughs> Whoops a doopsie. We keep saying we're gonna make a checklist of stuff that we need to check before we leave. Yeah. I haven't quite done that yet. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, now back on the road. Yeah. Yo, we made it to Cuba. There it is, right there. <laughs> I was really hoping it'd be a little warmer. It is so cold and windy you guys sadly <laughs> as we were setting this shot up these trash bins just came flying at us leaves are blowing in our face it's crazy it's pretty gusty but today we are traveling through the old route 66 and it cuts right through the little city of cuba yeah so we're not in the country no. in case you were wondering but it is known as the city of murals because they have murals all over the downtown area in different parts of the town they also in true route 66 fashion have a lot of very quirky attractions yeah. that we're gonna try to go scope out yeah we're gonna fit in at least a few of them today because that's something we've always wanted to do with the rv is to take it down route 66 try out a bunch of goofy roadside attractions yep Ooh. today's the day the yeah. coldest day of the year <laughs> sorry there's a huge loud truck coming <laughs> Okay, let's get out of here and head downtown. You guys, we're trying to decide. What do you think about this parking job? <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit more skeptical than Eric is. He seems to think it's fine, but... If you look from back here, we're not really sticking out all that far, so... I think I'm gonna call this good to go. Cuba is known for many unique attractions, and one of the things we were most excited about were these. Y'all, these are the world's biggest shoes that were legitimately worn by the world's biggest man. The shoe is the size of my arm. He was eight feet, two and a quarter inches. This is so neat. They have it in this case here with these like clippings about the guy. So I guess when he was nine, he was already six feet tall. And then he ended up going up to over eight feet tall. And very appropriately, it's in the middle of a shoe store. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy with his family and he is literally double the height of these people. Is this real? <laughs> guess how old he is there? How old? He's 21. <laughs> Oh, 
Y'all, we found a restaurant called Missouri Hicks Barbecue, and it sounded <laughs> right up our alley. Because <laughs> we're a couple of Missouri Hicks. A <laughs> couple of Missouri Hicks. At least today we are in Old Clementine. So, yeah. uh... <laughs> Exploring Route 66? Man, we're doing it proper. I know. I feel like I'm like a properly retired person, just out living my life, taking it slow. It's wonderful. I definitely understand the appeal of this. We were just talking about how cool it would have been to be back in the 70s and just driving down Route 66, stopping everywhere. Because Clementine presumably drove all over Route 66. It runs right through Missouri. I have so. no doubt. So maybe she feels like home. Yeah. She feels right at home here. Look what we did, you guys. <laughs> they had St. Louis style ribs on the menu and that I think it's some of our favorite barbecue that we've ever had in our lives. Also, look at this cottage cheese that I got. <laughs> It's definitely the fanciest I've ever seen. Yeah, it's got like cayenne or paprika or something, sesame seeds on top of there, and a cheeky little cherry tomato. Woohoo! Check that out. Oh man. Oh, that's gonna be good. <laughs> Look at that sweet meat. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. You get just the, the creaminess of the fat. That's what makes it so good. Super juicy, very, very smoky. The perfect temperature, the perfect texture, the perfect day. The perfect company. Aw, thanks, <laughs> darling. No, I was talking about the ribs. Oh, that makes more sense. Of course. Coming from you. I was a bit more bad than Eric. I could not decide what to get, so I went with the sampler. So I too got ribs, but I also got pulled pork and brisket. And then I got mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans. I'm going way southern, y'all. Tell them what we're planning to eat for dinner. We bought ribeye steaks to make for dinner. They're thin, cut, and small, but I'm I'm having a lot of anxiety about eating this much meat in one day. I was saying, telling him maybe we should get some salmon or just go completely vegetarian tonight. We'll see. She's got all their sauces all nicely set up for a little photo. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things is barbecue sauces, tasting all the different ones, but they have too many good sounding ones. How do you decide? Sweet and smoky, spicy, sweet. I don't know all what to them. do. Obviously, I'm gonna have to mix them all together and make one super sauce. Right next door to the barbecue place is Wagon Wheel Motel and y'all, this is the oldest continuously operated motel on Route 66. But how cool is this? Little Cuba has so much history here. So this is still in operation? Yes, it's still going. Oh, that's cool. It might be a little dead. It's just a Thursday afternoon, but yeah, you can stay here. It's been completely restored. I think these might be the original fuel pumps out here. So you have to imagine that you're driving this. It you know, looks a lot nicer than it does right now. You pull up right here after an awesome day of driving Route 66, driving, you know, about 55 miles an hour. Yeah. You get a little gas, and then you're back on the road. And then you're back on the road. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you, you explained it very well. <laughs> That's how you did it. <laughs> you guys, check this out. I think this was a real working, like, pit. You call it a pit? You know, like, Probably. they would pull in here and change oil on these old cars. That's super cool. I'm way too scared to go into this thing. Man, you guys got to see what it looks like under this old rust bucket. Check that out. <laughs> that has seen better days. Did you end up using the restroom at the barbecue place? I did. You did? Yeah. Was yours an outhouse? No. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Ours was an indoor outhouse, but it had proper plumbing, but it was set up like an outhouse. Oh, ours was a very nice, what? just regular bathroom. Well, why did they give the man no an outhouse? Aww. I just assumed yours was like that. Well, anyways, it was kind of cool. <laughs> to our next attraction and it's a very large rocking chair. <laughs> Y'all people are so wacky the things that they build and put along Route 66. This, believe it or not, is not the biggest rocking chair in the entire world. It's the second largest at 42 feet 4 inches high. It weighs 27,500 pounds and it's made out of I believe steel beams. It was at one point the largest rocking chair in the world, but somebody built one a little bit bigger, 50 something feet. So now it's the second largest in the world, but the largest on Route 66. Also to win the world record, this thing actually had to rock and it did. 
but I, I guess it was pretty horrifying having a huge multi-ton metal object going back and forth so they quickly bolted it down once they got their title. <laughs> it doesn't rock anymore, but you can still scale it apparently and get a photo op up there. You gonna try that, babe? Uh, heck no. <laughs> there is no ladder, so I don't even know. They were saying people sometimes bring ropes and jimmy up there. I was trying to devise a way where we could park the RV over there and use that to jump up to it, but yeah. it's not quite tall enough. I was thinking like, you know, cheerleader, get Eric like this and throw him up there. Throw me from here yeah. to there. Up there. <laughs> my word y'all it is far too cold and windy out there Woo! we're gonna <laughs> head back to the campsite and heat it up heat, turn our heater on that's get, what she meant by heat it up heat it up not whatever else you oh. guys might have been thinking maybe we will maybe we won't. Right. body heat's good for warming up we have arrived at our koa for the night We've actually been wondering, now that we're on the road, we really wanted to know what kind of content you guys really wanted to see. Because some of you guys were saying, oh, I'm so glad you guys are on the road. Some of you guys are saying, I wish you'd go back to Europe. Some are really bummed that the RV renovation is done. So we're going to do a little poll and see what you all think. It's going to be in the corner of the screen and linked in the description below, probably in a pinned comment as well. But basically, do you want us to renovate another RV? Do you want us to just keep traveling indefinitely in Clementine? Maybe buy some land, build a tiny house? I don't know. Now, I know a lot of you are going to leave comments answering that question which is wonderful thank you but it would be much more helpful if you could also or only answer the poll yes because we are trying to get a real quantifiable amount of people who want us to do which things does that make sense well what she means is a lot of times we just read a bunch of comments and they can kind of sway what we think you guys want to see or what you like and don't like and you never really know so we figure a poll is maybe a little bit more scientific but all right we're gonna hunker down for the rest of the night we're gonna get all hooked up we're gonna get all cozy on the inside and then probably make dinner watch a movie just have ourselves a nice little night Ooh, nice little thirsty <laughs> Ground left us a little notice that it's going to get 27 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. Oh, no. I didn't realize it was going to get so cold. They left us this to make sure that we disconnect the faucet because I guess it can cause damage to the pipes or something. So instead of plugging up to the water, we're just filling our tank up. So we'll be all good to go for the night. I think that we are going to be cooking in here quite often. It is yeah. very enjoyable. We're loving that we can just cook anything we would in a house right here in our RV. Exactly. We did roast some little baby potatoes and some green beans. I'm so excited for these. They're coated in Greek seasoning. Those little cavenders right here, y'all. This is Slap Your Mama. Slap Your Mama is the best. Cavender is second. That's all you need in life. Those two things. Some ghee. Yeah, we cooked our steaks with ghee instead of butter this time. Yeah, ghee and grapeseed oil. But we're gonna devour this. We're gonna watch ourselves a little movie. We're gonna chill. Y'all don't need to see that stuff. So we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, y'all. Hello there. We had a lovely final night at the KOA, mm -hmm. but there's one thing that was right down the road that we wanted to scope out before we leave the area, and that is Merrimack Caverns. It's these caves that are carved into the hillside over there. I guess they're more so underground, but what's cool about them is that it's freezing out here, but it should be like 60 degrees in there oh, year round. I'm ready for that. Also, there are not very many people here. No, Off yeah. season, baby. mentioned this but this cave is actually where Jesse James hid out and escaped the law after the first ever recorded train robbery and he got away on this river right here that's wild and sounds horrifying there's a lot of lights in here right now and it's still scary I can't imagine back in the day we just cry a lantern no thanks
got to love a cave tour. <laughs> This one actually had a lot of really cool formations that we hadn't really seen before. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. So now we have to head back down to Southern Missouri. Um, we have to clean out the garage because we're pretty much done with it. Yeah. And we've been putting it off because you guys know we made a massive mess in there. Yeah, so we gotta go clean that. Thanksgiving is coming up. So we got the holidays and then we're hitting the road going abroad. So we're trying to do a little f fall cleaning. Yeah, a lot of y'all have been asking about the Christmas markets. That is happening. Assuming the markets don't get shut down, hopefully they don't. That yeah. could put a damper on our plans. At but. this moment they're happening, stay tuned. It, we might have sad news, hopefully not. Yeah. But yeah, this has been a little taste of life on the road with Clementine. And I think we could get used to it. Obviously we have a lot of little kinks we have to work out with this place. We're basically just compiling a list of all the little things that we gotta sort out, but yeah. we'll get there. That's part of the fun of it, right? Basically we just need to find uh, ways to to like attach everything to the ground. Yeah. If we could just attach everything to the ground, it'd be super duper. Oh, you don't like having a pile of junk? sitting in our entryway? No, I don't <laughs> like it at all. Goodbye, adventures. We'll see you on the road.